Welcome back to Escapement and Watch. Falling Titan here thanking Kavar Jewelers for lending this into the channel. And if you want to buy this watch, email me in the description below and I'll give you a discount code. Let's check out the unboxing experience. This NATO strap is absolutely phenomenal. Look at that braiding right on the edges. It looks so high quality, it feels amazing. And yeah, look at that buckle. Beautiful vintage Longines logo right there. The cross hatching, nicely milled, fantastic. This is a great NATO. Got it, it was a bit stuck. There she is. Ooh, nice. Introducing the Longines Heritage Line Legend Diver in beautiful bronze and green. What a stunning watch, combining three hot trends in one watch. We got the beautiful bronze case trend, looking amazing. I love the look of bronze. Everyone should have one in the collection. We have the green dial trend, which is happening now in 2021, and the super compressor trend style cases. These are coming back in a big way, and I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. It just looks fantastic. Now quickly, for any of you who don't know, Longines is a titan of the watch industry. The best kept secret among enthusiasts because if the general public knew about its beautiful history, world's first chronograph wristwatch, and many other firsts for the industry, their value would definitely increase and we would be paying a lot more for our Longines. And we love our Longines, especially the Heritage line. I love the sector dial. I love the tuxedo, tuxedo video coming soon. You guys are gonna love it. Now, this one is amazing. It reminds us of the 7042, the original from 1958. And that was a true super compressor. This one is just super compressor style. Got the beautiful cross hatching on those crowns looks amazing and we do have that bezel-less case as you can see it looks like a bezel at the base of the faux bezel is a high polished lip but the rest of the case is completely brushed and it makes it look like a bezel but it's not it's one solid piece of milled bronze from the sapphire crystal with ar presses directly into the case so this watch is ultra thin and elegant looking and it's mostly all crystal as you can see. Look at that, the AR coating is doing a good job, but the glass has a slight dome to it. So it does create some reflections in the studio. Now the measurements that I got, 42.1 in diameter and I went from nine to three because the crowns were in the way. And here's the thickness that we spoke about 12.7 that might sound thick but look at that sapphire it is at least two and a half mils it's just unbelievable all right without the sapphire, if we put a flat on this first of all it would it would kill the design it, it would be a little bit boring but it would be like 10 or 9 mils so it's a thin one and the lug to lug 52.4 an extraordinary distance to cover so you're gonna have to have a slightly bigger wrist we're gonna see it on my six and a half inch wrist near the end of the video and are you guys catching this beautiful fume green dial green fading to black it's just phenomenal it doesn't it doesn't just pop it's not in your face green it's very subtle and classy and i think it's well done Now the strap is beautiful, rich, coffee brown, hand stitched, unbelievable softness. It's gonna break in almost instantly. Just feels great. And it is 22 mils, so be wary of that. And it does have two keepers, one stationary and one movable keeper right here. And look at that buckle, beautiful. It has the cross hatching as well, same as the NATO strap matching 
the super compressor style dual crowns. The case back is in titanium, so not to cause any reactions with the skin. Some people may be allergic to the bronze. And Longine went one step further instead of stainless steel, went with titanium. So very thoughtful of them, and it has that cool diver with the harpoon. Guess he's a fisherman of some sort. Both crowns are screwed down, no clutch system. And you get a nice pop right here on the bottom crown. This is for setting the time. And it's just one position, that's it. Hack, hand wind, right there. That's it, beautiful. That's the beauty of a no date and we love no dates. As watch enthusiasts, we love no dates. Guys, I am getting into no dates. It's just something nice about picking up a watch from your watch box and just setting the time, giving it a little shake and then you're off. You don't have to worry about, is it Wednesday, is it Thursday? Especially nowadays, it doesn't matter anyways. <laughs> so yeah, and that's uh, I love the no date. I'm just preferring it now a lot. I don't know. Let me know down in the comments. So the top crown is also screw down, but there's no pop. It's just for the inner rotating bezel. Okay. And you can feel a little bit of a clicking. It's still very smooth and it's faint to feel it. It's kind of hard to feel it with the gloves. I don't feel it, but I felt it before. You can line it up perfect, push down and you screw it in. Everything works perfectly. Mastery in watchmaking right here from Longines. Now let's have fun and compare it with an SKX. Why not? I'm just gonna line it up. <laughs> All right, so both of these are 42 millimeters. Look at that. <laughs> but look at that massive wingspan on the Longines. Man, I wonder how this is gonna wear my wrist. I wore one before, but I completely forgot. The SKX has that short lug to lug, so very wearable, but the Longines has elegance and grace with that beautiful case shape. What do you guys think? Hmm, I don't know, not too bad. Let's compare it with another vintage watch. Let me just line them up. There, 39.9 on the 62 mass, 42.1 on the Longines. Actually, it looks pretty comparable. Both have that box sapphire, but the Longines is much thicker box. And similar case shapes, but a more dramatic downturn on the Longines lugs. Ah, love vintage style watches. Let me know down in the comments which would you have? You know what? I would love to see this on a green Tropic. All right, wouldn't that be nice? A Tropic strap exactly like this, but green to match the dial. Yeah, that'd be amazing. Here she is on my 6.5 inch wrist. All right, guys, what do you think? The lug to lug is definitely long, but because it downturns so dramatically, it's not bad. A bit too big for me, but I don't know. It has a lot of presence. Kind of feel like a boss with it, but yeah, a bit too large for my taste, but still amazingly beautiful. I would say seven inch wrist and above, maybe 6.75. Man, it's gorgeous. Let's check the weight, guys. All right, oh my God, 84 grams. That's unbelievable comfort right there. That titanium case back definitely helping out in the weight department. This one is definitely tough to put on the time grapher with the two crowns. Now the last one we had didn't perform too great, but we do have the L888.5 movement. The 0.5 is the most up-to-date one with the silicon balance, free sprung balance, beautiful anti-magnetic, more resistant to positional variance, temperature fluctuations, pressure. So an amazing movement. And it's based off the 2892, the high-end ETA, a great Swiss watch movement. If you want a Swiss movement, guys, always go, if you can, 2892. That is a beautiful movement. It winds like butter. And while I'm waffling, look at these numbers. And the, we're, only, we're gonna do eight rounds, dial up and 12 down. 
one, one, zero, zero, one in the final and eighth round, plus one. Now let's do 12 down. A little bit of beat error there at the end at point three. So here's 12 down because the crowns are this way. Give it some time from the flopping. Let's go. So plus one, dial up, and let's see the positional variance of that silicone bounce hairspring. Ooh, we got a dip in amplitude, 253, but still decent. And the B air increased dramatically, 0 0.6 milliseconds. You can hear that awkward beat, 25.2 VPH. Okay, so the ETA 2892 is usually at 28.8 with that beautiful medium sweep. It's going to be hard to notice because they slow it down just slightly to get to 64 hours of power reserve. We have a small dip in amplitude, 249. Ooh, getting a little weak there, but look at the rate. One, negative one, negative two, zero, zero. Oh, and the final and eighth round, we're going to call it zero. Amazing. Good job, Longine. Here is the loom shot. Nice loom on those hands. A little bit weak on that bezel. You have the triangle at 12 on the inner rotating bezel. And we got loom pips all around except for on the poles where we have those hash mark loom plots at 12639. It looks kind of strange seeing the lines with the pips. It's just an awkward loom look. Do you guys agree? And it is a little weak. It is fading. I'm trying to focus just for comparison sakes. Let me bring out the 62 mass. And yeah, <laughs> so not the greatest loom, um, a little bit disappointing for a 300 meter diver. Um, it's wow, it's faded. The pips are gone. Well, you can there, if I put it into my, I have a nightlight in the back there, you can see it. So not the greatest loom. Um, yeah, just not the greatest loom. Okay, here she is in the half lighting and the legibility is amazing with those bronze hands. And it has a good contrast against that green, dark Fume fading to black dial. Easy to read the time, even in low light situations. Big fan of that. And this is such a beautiful watch. What do you guys think of the Longines Legend Diver? Are you a fan of it? And if you like this video, please like, share and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.